Hello, everybody. Welcome to AP Stats. We're beginning confidence intervals today. So um, let's get started. All right, we're taking a sample and trying to estimate P, okay? And the problems we've been doing, I've been telling you the true proportion of left-handers are 17%. Okay, well, that's when we know that true proportion. This is the case for confidence interval where I don't know the proportion. So what we're doing is we're taking a sample and what we're trying to do is figure out what the real proportion is. And notice that every time I take a sample, we'd get different results. So we're not really ever gonna be sure or know that true proportion, okay? All right, we're taking the sample, trying to estimate P, the true proportion, okay, of the population. No, we do not know the actual values of P or sigma. Those are parameters, right? We will only know statistics. We will only know the P hat that we got, and then we'll calculate a standard deviation using that which is not the right P we know, so we'll call that the standard error, okay? All right, that comes down here. We must estimate them using the info we got from our sample. The standard deviation that we calculate will be known as the standard error. That's because we're, we know it's not really the correct one, and if I did the problem again, I would have a different standard deviation and a different P hat. Okay. We are aware that every time we take a sample, we'll get a slightly different results, which would lead us to different estimates of P and sigma. Okay, CI stands for confidence interval. ME stands for your margin of error. Okay, real simply put, your confidence interval is P hat plus or minus the margin of error. Okay, and that gives us an interval, and we say, oh, we're, in this case, we're gonna do our problem's gonna be 95% confidence level. So we'll say, oh, we're 95% confident, the true proportion lies somewhere between these two values, okay? All right, our margin of error, okay, that portion here that we're adding, this is the standard deviation. It's how many of those standard deviations we're going to add on either side to gain a certain level of confidence, okay? So we'll have a Z value, we'll talk about how to get that. And this notice is our standard uh, deviation calculation, but it's got P hat and Q hat in there, so, Again, if I did the problem again, I would get a different P hat here, and that's my center, right, of my interval. Plus, I would, ha I would use a different one here and here. It would give me a standard deviation as well. So it's pretty uncertain, like we're not doing anything exact for sure. Okay, and your Z score is your test statistics or critical value. All right, here is our first problem, and I'll go really quickly. I've sort of done it for you already. Okay, but we're interested in finding out the true proportion of sea corals that are infected with the disease aspergillosis. 19 sites are randomly chosen along the Los Reedes Reef off of Mexico. Out of 104 samples taken, 54 of those are infected. Okay, so that's where I want to stop and think with you. Okay, so I took 104 samples. If I did 104 different samples, I would definitely get a different answer than 54 most likely. Okay, I would have a different P hat then again. So I don't know the true proportion, okay? That's the main thing that you need to understand with confidence intervals. They were trying to guess it, okay? So we're using P hat from our sample, all right? Okay, so 54 out of 104, that's the proportion we found, that's our P hat. We're gonna construct a 95% confidence interval to estimate the true proportion of infected sea corals on the Las Reedes Reef, okay? All right. Some nice things for you. The conditions are exactly the same. Random sample independence and normality. Random sample, um, if it says that, then we just put a check. If it doesn't, we say we assume the coral samples of the 104 coral samples are, were randomly selected. Independence, we're assuming that the 104 samples are less than 10% of all the coral in the Las Vegas Reef. And normality, since we're a proportion, P times Q, in this case, it's P hat times Q hat must be greater or equal to 10 and, uh, sorry, n times p, n times p hat would be greater or equal to 10, and n times q hat would be greater or equal to 10. We're really just um, saying we expect at least 10 successes and failures. Well, we got 54 successes and the rest are failures, um, which would be, what, 50 out of 104? So we have those 10 there. Okay, so that will meet that condition for sure. Okay, our information we gather from the problem, very simple actually and very little. Our sample size is 104, and our proportion of successes that we got, and it's not a good thing to have infected coral, but in this case, that's what we're looking for, so we call that a success. P 
p-hat would be 54 out of 104, and I rounded that off to 0.52 for our purposes, I would keep four places normally, okay? All right, and we're going to use that for our standard deviation calculation, which is the same, p-hat, or p times q over n, but now it's p-hat times q-hat, and since it's not from the correct real data, we call it the standard error, okay? And that value is 0 0.0490, but the calculation is the same, which is great, okay? All right, we're going to come down and do our confidence interval. Okay, again, it's p-hat plus or minus the margin of error. p-hat is 0.52 plus or minus our margin of error, and our margin of error here consists of our z-score and then our standard deviation calculation, or our, in other words, our standard error here, right? That's 0 0.0490, we calculated that. This is our z-score, okay, how did we get that? All right, we're looking for, we have an interval, we have all the, all the possibilities that we could get with our samples here, okay, and what we want is 95% in there, all right? So what I do is look up inverse norm, okay, and notice that you always put the area to the left there, so I'm gonna put in, if this is 95% we want, there's 5% left, split between both sides, so that leaves 2.5% below this one and 2.5 above. Okay, so I just put in the left side here, 0.025 in inverse norm, and it'll round to negative 1.96. The negative isn't important, we're just looking for how far apart these are, how many standard deviations away they are. Okay, this would be positive 1.96 by symmetry, all right? So 1.96 is my z-score. And notice we're doing plus or minus, so having a negative there makes no difference. Okay, so that's my z value, okay, multiplied by the standard deviation. That will give us our interview point, in, interval, 0.52 plus those two multiplied together is here, and 0.52 minus that is going to give me this value there. Okay, and this is how I write my interval. That's it right there. Okay, if I were to have a 90% interval, let's say, that would leave. 10% left over, there'd be 5% over here. I would do inverse norm with 0.05 in there to find the z-score the way that I need to be to have that remaining 5% on either side of that left out, okay? So, all right, we get this interval. I'm gonna write our solution, and I always feel a little weird here because this is not actually true, but this is what we write, and this is what we say to the public. We are 95% confident the true proportion of infected coral along the Las Reedes Reef lies between 42 and 62%. All right, now the reason I say it's not really true is that's not really the true meaning of the confidence interval. The true meaning of this interval is the 95% confidence means that if I were to do this process over and over again, 95% of the intervals I would get contain, would contain the true proportion, all right? And we're hoping that this interval we have between here and here, okay, is one of the good intervals, and there's a good chance it is, approximately 95%, that this one contains a true proportion. Okay, also it's important to note, it's, it's just as likely that it could be down here, 0.42, as in the middle of the interval. We're just saying it's somewhere in there, because if we calculated over again, we'd get a different interval every time we did it. You see that? And then now again, we're saying that 95% of those intervals would contain the true proportion within them, all right? and it could be anywhere in there. We're just hoping that's one of the intervals, and we could be wrong, and we realize that. All right, I'm gonna put up a problem for you to do here, and I'd like you to do this before I see you in class. I'll leave that up for a second. Notice it's a 90% interval, so you can have 5% on either side of that. All right, thank you.